Jack Stuss Homestuck is a self-indulgent podcast featuring a heart player encouraging you to be self-indulgent too. Welcome home. Hey y'all, quick correction. So at the end of this, I uh, say that Abby is the one who drew the episode art. This is actually the promo material for Goblin's zine, uh, Distant Past. So be sure to check that out. I just want to clarify that this was not Abby who did it because I credit Abby twice because I made this new intro and or outro and um, that that this is in fact the promo material for uh, the distant past scene. Yeah, so this is Jaxus Homestuck. Uh, this is another fan stuck episode because I schedule things weird. Normally these are going to be every other week and then the next week is going to be read stuck unless something weird happens. But um, we have Goblin here and Goblin is an exception to all rules. Yes. So, uh, yeah. So Goblin, why don't you uh, introduce yourself, uh, your your name and pronouns and stuff? Oh boy. Okay. Um, hi, my name is Goblin. You might know me as Glass Goblin on Twitter or Gutter Water Goblin on Tumblr or Instagram. I go by they, them pronouns and I'm here for a good time. I also really love the ancestors. I should probably mention that also. Yes. Well, I hope so, because you're here to talk about an ancestor zine. And if you didn't like ancestors, that'd be kind of weird. I'm doing it for the clout. We should have all known. <laughs> yes, because fucking everyone loves ancestors. That's how you get clout, is by talking about ancestors in the Homestuck fandom. Absolutely. every It's the most popular uh, portion of the... It's like the entire, you know, sixth act is just yeah. all ancestors. <laughs> yeah, that's all it is. Um, so yeah, so tell me, tell me a bit about your project. Uh, I, I don't think you have it up and running. Is that correct? Um, well, it's, it's going to be released soon. It's not released yet. Okay. Uh, but it's almost, we're almost there, uh, in almost. the final stretch. Yeah. Of it's, uh, creation. Cool. Cool. Uh, but, is there like uh, a release date you think? Oh, uh, okay. We're shooting for October 18th. There's no specific importance to that date. I just thought it sounded good. I mean, you have to pick a deadline because if you just say sometime in the future, maybe a couple more weeks, then you'll say a couple more weeks forever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just like, uh, just like the con, this is like, ah, you know what? We could extend this a little bit longer. We can yeah. run this one out a little bit longer. Just a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, so, um, I, I mean, where did you come up with the idea? It seems because you love ancestors and you're like, screw you, I'm going to make a zine with them. Oh, absolutely. Um, I think the idea started in March and I was like barely known on Twitter, but I was just kind of like shooting my ideas out. And I think I just said at random, I'm like, why isn't there an ancestor zine? Because this was after i think the roxy zine came out there were like just a handful of homestuck zines at the time other people mm -hmm. were like starting them starting zine ideas and i was like why why not the ancestors because i think out of all the like the ancestors seem to work really well in like an uh, anthology setting mm -hmm. so i'm like why <laughs> why not but I, I i did not know how to run a zine so i was just like eh I'll just shoot that out there. Somebody will pick it up. And then after the epilogues came out, I don't know why the epilogue spurred me on. Maybe it was the whole martyr died and said fuck. That was like, all right, yeah. here's my motivation. Um, but I was like, you know what? I think I can do this. And so I contacted some of my friends and they seemed on board. And enough people seemed genuinely interested that I like, scrambled to put it together and that's how the distant past zine was born um it was originally called irons in the fire because i thought that would be a funny play on like oh signless dying in the <laughs> like with the shackles yeah. and stuff yeah but, but it just seemed like it seemed a little too lengthy and then my girlfriend just jokingly mentioned like hey why don't you call it uh the distant past zine based off of this one song we both liked and I was like haha that's funny and then I kept sitting on it and I was like haha that's actually a really good name for a zine about the ancestors 
Yeah. Um, so that was its inception. And I think we opened applications in May. Mm-hmm. And holy macaroni, the reception was fantastic. Um, had about like 160 applications, oh, wow. which, was, which was crazy to think about because I thought like, oh, this is gonna, just going to be tiny. We're going to get like, I don't know, hopefully 24, 48 artists max. Yeah. We ended up accepting 60, which was beyond amazing because I was like, oh dang yeah people people actually like the ancestors it's just like I think everybody has this collective decision that oh nobody cares about the ancestors nobody nobody wants content for the ancestors when we all collectively actually want content for the ancestors we're all just lazy yeah lazy and just like I mean I'll just focus drawing on this other thing that people like more because it'll get me more commissions or whatever which is like a valid way to do things Um, yeah but y'all are just a silent but passionate group of folks (laughs) yeah exactly like uh the I mean I wouldn't call us a cult I would hate to call us the cult of the sufferer because that was actually bad (laughs) but we're like the cool the cool kids all ganging together to be like all right time to talk about the ancestors again absolutely so what drew you to the ancestors to begin with Oh boy. Um, The ancestors were actually one of the beginning reasons why I read Homestuck in the first place, because um, before I knew Homestuck, I was just in like a group, uh, group chat with some of my friends. And one of them randomly just posted about the song Iron Infidel. And they were like talking high praises about it, raving about it. And I was like, okay, I'll, I'll check this out. And I, as soon as the organ started playing, it sent me like, I just got like hit with a wave of memories of uh, my life, like growing up in like a Catholic family and like having to go to church every week and like having that, okay, here's time to sing the hymn. And like, you know, you get the singer up on stage on the, on the altar. It's like, all right, time to everybody, come on, let's sing together. And like, I just, I, I felt that in the moment. And I, I don't know if I cried. I probably cried. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what? and I was like, I was searching. I was like, wait a minute. There's a Jesus character in here. There's some like religious history and lore in here. And uh, so, yeah, when I actually started reading Homestuck proper, I had known like, oh, there's this character called the signless. He's going to pop up at some point. And when he did, that's all I cared about. <laughs> yeah, wow. God, you read through so much for yes. so little content. Yes. I was like, I, I got those like handful of pages about him. And I was like, oh, man, oh, <laughs> can't wait to hyper focus on this for <laughs> the next year and a half. Yeah. And it also like. I got into Homestuck late in the game. I got into it like mid 2018. So I missed the the wave of like all the ancestor content. So like mm-hmm. all of the toasty hat art, all of the uh, papers everywhere, lyric stucks. Like I didn't get to experience that. So it was just me like sitting in front of my computer on Tumblr, like just back searching, backlogging for like, where's all this ancestor content and noticing that not many people drew it anymore and I was like I guess I gotta take up the reins guess I have to be the new ancestor connoisseur yeah (laughs) which was fine I'm fine with it now I think it's kind of funny that like at one point I was the top blog when you searched for the psionic it was (laughs) Like in our, in our good year of 20, 2019, I goblin <laughs> <laughs> love the psionic. Yeah, that was that was gonna be my my next question, which is your favorite, which I'm I'm sure is not a surprise to many people. Who <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, it is a big toss up within like the inner circle. So like disciple, signless, uh, psionic, Dolorosa, but. I think as for which character I talk about the most and the one I cling on to the most is definitely the psionic can't help being a Gemini. Um, (laughs) I 
And I also mentioned, like, I always jokingly mention that I have a thing for pilot characters. I don't know what's up with flying. I don't know why I enjoy it so much. I guess it's like the freedom aspect, freedom yeah. aspect. But like, I was like, oh, oh, you have this character that <laughs> pretty much was a, well, a helmsman for thousands of years. That sounds pretty cool. <laughs> what if I just, <laughs> you, yeah, like reading the entire, you know, uh, all of Homestuck, all 8,000 pages plus epilogues and then just going back and pointing to those three pages and being like yeah. you? <laughs> oh, that's that's so you guys are so strong. I don't know what I would do <laughs> if I didn't have like, I mean, I, you know, my, my favorite characters are usually like the popular characters because I'm a mm -hmm. basic bitch like that. <laughs> uh, uh, Dirk is obviously still a popular character but probably the least popular character that that is a favorite of mine in any series so um i i couldn't do that i don't have the strength to go without that content but you're out here yeah just making this stuff it is it's so good like um because i don't i don't understand i don't know what's going on with the ancestors at all so i need you guys to like let me know <laughs> yeah that's our that's the job also like i was talking in uh, a fan troll discord and i, I noticed that there's a lot of similarities <clears throat> between like the ancestor fandom and like the fan troll fandom. It's like, yeah, these characters exist and kind of like pl proliferate throughout like media, what have you. But it's like, mm -hmm. you have to like, there's no content. So you gotta be <laughs> the one to create the stories. And like, yeah, as much as the psionic is a character that belongs to Hussey, it's like, no, the psionic belongs to me now. I have to. <laughs> I, mean, I have to be the one to tell his story. Yeah, because you don't know much of anything that happens. You know, like two things. And oh yeah, everything else is up to you. Absolutely. I also noticed that, like, uh, I was talking to somebody, and they connected, like, oh, if you like Greek mythology, if you were like a Greek mythology nerd in high school, you probably like the ancestors because of the mythos. Oh yeah that's that's a typical reason why people enjoy the ancestors that super makes sense <laughs> either i think you're an ex-catholic or you really like greek mythology you read all of percy <laughs> jackson yeah yeah no that's legit man i should get into it i love percy jackson and greek mythology um, but like i i mean i also understand it as in like yeah there's not a lot of content so like it's hard to get involved in that moment especially when so much other shit is going on i think when the ancestors are introduced yeah there's like a lot of meta breaking i think at that point when it's like oh you see the signless but also hussy has a room and he's about to like beat the shit out of doc scratch yeah yeah there's a lot happening then yeah <laughs> um yeah, and I mean, there's so much going on in Homestuck that it's just like we all have to break off into our own little groups and like obsess over the different parts so other people can put it all together into one whole. Absolutely. We can't all finish. We can't all collect singularly finish a gigantic puzzle. Somebody's got to take over the little pieces. Yeah, it's like you deal with that corner. You deal with all the pieces that look kind of greenish and maybe have some tea <laughs> on there. Um. <laughs> I pick all the ones that are yellow and I'm yeah. <laughs> clicking them together. <laughs> exactly. And, uh, and yeah, it, it's good. It's good that we can have so much content about this. It's, it's just, it's, I, I kind of made one of my, my friends a little bit afraid who's getting into Homestuck. Cause I'm like, yeah, there's Homestuck scholars. There's like Homestuck lore. Oh, and God. yeah, I don't know. And I'm like, no, no. It's like, because there's just so much like, hidden beneath a surface that's like kind of touched on and then like oh well we'll go on and, and beat the shit out of people with brooms and um yeah and yeah it's really great so yeah i'm glad you got such a good reception for your for your zine um that so many people have had it out there do you have is anyone posting previews uh up oh here? absolutely yes uh we started posting previews i think it was the end of august okay cool. um so mostly it's just been like the uh artist posting whips but we also like sneak peeks but we also have people we we do have writers and okay. we also have a musician who i'm really excited about i've heard listen oh, to awesome. some of their stuff 
absolutely gorgeous work. Uh, they're supposed to be for Darklier, but they also <laughs> have made songs for like Signless and Disciple and Psionic and other characters. So we'll see where that goes. I'm personally very excited, but. Yeah, that is so cool. I'm, I'm glad that more zines are uh, bringing in, like, but it's not just drawing. Like there's a lot of things you can put into a zine, especially in a digital format. Yeah, so. I was thinking like, it's, it's a free digital zine about the ancestors. Why would I want to hinder people from making content about the ancestors? Exactly. And yeah. And just the, the musicians around the Homestuck fandom are so freaking oh good. Oh God. Oh so God. Great. They're fantastic. Shout out to every musician. I adore you. You motivate me to keep making art. I know. Mercy. They're so good. I mean, like everyone who creates in this fandom is good, but like, you know, I, I'm in some other fandoms and we don't have people like popping off, making music for it and like it being a common thing. Um, oh, absolutely. Yeah. That was like, because I came from, before I was into Homestuck, do you, wow, I, I was into podcasts. Um, I was into like very small podcast fandoms and pretty much what you got was fanfic and art and that was it. Well, you got yeah. like some edits, some audio edits, which were really cool, but um it was it was hard to find that that crazy uh glut of just like content that yeah. that didn't exist that wasn't a thing no absolutely like dragon age uh was my big fandom before homestuck and once dragon age 4 comes out i'm going back in i'm sorry y'all this will be a dragon <laughs> age podcast after that um <laughs> i salute thee yeah and like i know there are some people who make dragon age songs but like i don't i know that from non-dragon age people telling me about it funnily enough mm -hmm. um yeah because people just they post art and they post fix and we go in a lot of meta and we uh rag on the developers oh absolutely and, <laughs> and there's not there's not much outside of that we just think real hard about it and we don't like go outside of that a whole lot so uh, the Homestuck fandom has always been such an interesting phenomenon. And I'm sorry, I'm taking a lot of time not talking about ancestors. No, but, you're uh, fine. I, I think it makes a, like, it's totally understandable. Like, hey, yeah, we got here somehow. I know. And I, it's just, there's just so much to Homestuck that people don't see on the surface. Like, most people don't see the ancestors on the surface and understand that there is like all this deep, deep lore that could be gone through and um all the creative stuff that that people do they're just like oh it's cringy fandom there's like gray people um, yeah who are these these great these gray goblins and it's actually just me it's, <laughs> yeah, it's actually just you <laughs> I, i'm standing there yeah like they <laughs> God, even before I, I got on here, uh, I, I made sure to spark note the Bible to make sure I knew what I was talking about. <laughs> I was like, I got to get prepared. I got to be prepared to talk about the ancestors, which means doing something that I would never do, which is read the Bible. Oh, yeah. Uh, I actually had to read the Bible before I was allowed to date in high school. Oh, my God. And what? <laughs> <laughs> so... That is incredible. That instill the fear of, of God in you before you get to date. Yeah, well, thankfully, my mom never read the Bible, so she just knew I read fast, so I could bullshit. I mean, you can only read so much about how many camels they have and how oh, many. Yeah. Like, I mean, there are entire books in the Old Testament just devoted to accounting. Yeah, absolutely. So that's my little side there. <laughs> No, but I, I mean, like, I was, this is another weird side, but I was, like, skimming through the Bible, like you do. Like you and, do. <laughs> and I notice it's, like, when it comes to the New Testament, a lot of things are just, like, okay, here's the story of Jesus through one person's perspective. Okay, here's the story of Jesus through another person's perspective. Over and over and over again. Yeah. And it's, like, isn't that just the ancestor fandom? Isn't that all just all of us, like, taking these characters that we know nothing of barely anything about and we're like all right i'm gonna make their canon yeah and we're all like yes and then we have another person being like all right i'm gonna make their canon and we're all like fantastic glorious thank you 
yeah, for some reason, uh, one person decides to make a Republican signless and the other person <laughs> decides to make a more human signless. And, you know, it just... <laughs> yeah, shout out, to, shout out to every human stuck signless that's like a hateful preacher. You guys are doing something. I don't you're know what it is. Something. It's, you know, you're doing it. You're, 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 you got the spirit. I don't think you're on the point, but you, you got know, the spirit. That... You know, you're writing. You're providing that content. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll take it. I'll, I'll, I'll enjoy it. I'll, I'll uh, take it apart for you, but I don't know. You know, everyone has their takes. Yeah. <laughs> God, there's a lot of wild ancestor takes. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't know, honestly. The only fix and stuff I see about the ancestors when I'm scrolling through the smut pages of AO3. You, you know what? That's the thing. That's <laughs> God, being an ans uh, being an ancestor stan is weird, but also being like a psionic stan is weird. I'm not gonna get into details, but if you can if you can you know if you know psionic story, you know how it ends. That's that's what people like to focus on <laughs> and that's what you're going to get. Um and yeah, for for ancestor fix, it's either uh, really well written long like anthologies, which I adore, or mm -hmm. it's smut, which is fine. I because like they're adults, okay? They're adults. Yeah, and like, like I, the whole problem, the whole thing is that they're adults. <laughs> they're adults who are dumb. They're dumbass adults. They're all yeah. himbos by nature, and like. I get it. I get like seeing the first adults in 50 billion years and being like, all right, time to go, fellas. Let's yeah. time to write smut, These fellas. Characters I can be horny for legally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't fault them for that. So, yeah. Alas. <laughs> yeah, that's just how it goes. Um, so, uh, so it's going to remain uh, digital. Going back to your zine. Yes. Oh, yes, the zine. <laughs> yeah, the zine. Um, yeah. Are, is it going to be hosted on like I think Dropbox is a popular place to host. Typically, yeah. I should. I'm going to be talking to like other people who have made zines about like what's the best uh, approach to mm -hmm. releasing a zine. I've typically seen Dropbox. Some people leave it on Google Drive, which is fine, um, especially because we're working with weird files like yeah. music files you can't really put those in like like a I don't think you can put it can you put them in a pd I don't know mm -hmm. but like um we'll just have to figure out ways to format it and also like I remember making the zine and telling myself this will never be printed I don't want this printed especially because my parents knew and I didn't want my parents to find out that like I'm making a zine that blasphemizes Jesus a little bit. It's like, <laughs> oh, here's this great Jesus. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, um, well, some people interpret him as Moses. So you can, oh, yeah. would that be better? Mate. <laughs> <laughs> hey, here's this great Moses. He's dying. Also, there's gay people. I yeah. like it might be a hard one to sell, mm -hmm. but I was like, the the farther away I can keep this out of my parents hands the better That's um fair. even though it is like I think I made the I made the rules PG-13 so there's no like crazy stuff but it's still like oh you're gonna get Condi who's very sexy you're gonna get Mindfang who's very sexy you're gonna get Dual Scar, who's very sexy it's like you're just gonna list all of them <laughs> sexy aren't you I could I could go on <laughs> yeah you're gonna get the summoner who's a himbo um and so another way I, I like, of course, if you're trying to like print a zine, you have to change the, uh, you have to change it from RGB to CMYK, which can completely mess up the colors. I don't think CMYK likes bright red that much. So that would probably screw over a lot of the signless artists. Oh, yeah. Bless their hearts. Yeah. Um, and I also made the file format um, for artists strange i made it uh six but six point nine by nine canvas because i wanted to have a funny uh signless reference in there 
Um, but also I wanted it to make it weird to print. Like that's not a typical printing size. No. So I was like, haha, have fun trying to print this now. It's a it's a weird book size. You're oppressing people with memes. Oh, you know what? That's another thing. That's um when when the ancestor zine, uh, when I made the Discord, I very specifically added a section like one channel called size approved memes where it's just where anybody can post their like ancestor shit posts because if ancestor stands are good at anything it's making horrible self-deprecating jokes about their favorite (laughs) characters because you have no content about them Mm -hmm. um so that might actually come back in the future there might be a little bit of a bonus added on to the end of the zine um but we'll see about that revolving around memes and jokes because there have been um ancest not ancestors but like uh floral marsupial made the the jade meme zine. yeah the jade, jade meme zine and then there's like another one that's just like general homestuck memes it's like free homestuck meme real estate whatever that was called and i was like you know what that's really smart memes are great i enjoy them dearly let's let's make some of them but for the ancestors because what is more rare than comedic content about the ancestors because typically if you're drawing art art for the ancestors it's like very serious very mm-hmm. religious very gorgeous like menage a trois and it's like <laughs> what, if, what if they're all idiots <laughs> consider the following <laughs> they're all very stupid yeah yeah, that'd be that'd be a great add-on. Uh, just more memes, and then yeah. they would look back at at history, being like, "Oh God, that meme was a thing. What year is it?" Oh my, you know what? That you, oh, you know what? We might have to incorporate some really old, somewhat cringy memes in there, just for the sake that they are ancestors. Therefore, the memes that they would enjoy would also be very old. The disciple says, "Can I have cheeseburger?" <sighs> Can I has my husband's leggings, please? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> please don't kill me, big blue man. Oh, man. <laughs> yes. Bring out the ancient memes. Yeah. They they deserve... You know what? Whenever Disciple was isolated in her caves, she just, she just made memes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, she didn't have people around, so she couldn't draw shipping charts like Nepeta, so... Yeah, you know, she just threw memes on the wall. I mean, that's what like I mean, Mulan was all about memes. That's how that's she communicated. True. So why yeah. not like when you think about uh, the spreading of ideas through culture, especially like in this age, like memes is a really good way to spread information. So like, what if she actually I unironically used like memetic devices? And kind so of like the, Dadaism. The, so the fucking summoner one day just stumbles across this cage with memes spread all over the walls and starts standing uh, the sufferer. Yes, that's you know. <laughs> <laughs> see. The summoner is a big um, allegory for the toxicity of stan culture and yeah. becoming too obsessed and writing self insert fan fiction with you and your favorite uh, famous person. The signless. Yeah. <laughs> it's like all that Invader Zen slash Jesus stuff. Oh, yep. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> We're decoding <laughs> it. I'm getting to the bottom of this. Yeah. We're getting to the bottom of something. Yeah. <laughs> Whether it's good or not, that's up for the listeners to decide. Yeah. Well, like you said, there's no ancestor content, so they have to love it anyway. Yeah, you know what? That's what you get for putting me, somebody who goes by Goblin, as the head for, like, an ancestor zine. I mean, as much of, like, there's actually legitimately very good content in the zine, but, like, also, I can't help going crazy, going stupid in, in, times, of, in times of need, especially with the ancestors. It's just, like, they drive me crazy because there's <laughs> no content for them. And it's like, you kind of invert on yourself and just start making jokes about them. So you're like, ha ha ha, look at these funny characters that like, 
nobody cares about. Haha, <laughs> laugh with me, please. Absolutely. Yeah, no one can fault you for that. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah, so thinking about your meme, your meme format, your zine format, <laughs> um, do a, I'll do a quick plug for Crow's uh, zine catalog. Oh, absolutely. So you can go through there and see all the different formats of zines. And everyone else, if you want to start a zine, you can go through there and see what it looks like. And I'll try to remember to post a link. Yeah, please, yeah. please make zines, actually. They're yeah. really, actually. I mean, like, they're hard. They're a little tricky to set up. I definitely agree. Like, I messed up a couple times when creating my zine. But that's what you get for, like, starting out on your own and, t- like, taking on most of the work. Like, the mm-hmm. bulk of putting together a zine but honestly it is such a great way to connect with other members of the community and especially like under a singular purpose and I think it really does motivate other people like it was funny how it's like oh for the scene yeah I like gave people oh you get one character to draw that's like just to make sure every uh ancestor got at least an equal ish amount of content but then after that people were like so motivated by other people's art that they like you know started making more pieces for the zine and that was really exciting um yeah so yes please please make zines uh especially free digital ones you don't you really don't have to print it i promise you you will survive without (laughs) having a physical copy of I don't know, 60, 70 pages, because those things can get expensive. Books yeah, are expensive. And, yeah. Yeah. Uh, let consumerism die. Just get <laughs> for free online. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Signless would want you to say fuck capitalism. Yeah. There we go. So. so... <laughs> <laughs> um, so do you have uh, any other projects that you're working on uh, once the zine's done or even now? um currently no I mean I always have ideas for like things on my own terms like oh maybe I'll make more ancestor lyric stacks because what do we need more than (laughs) more depressing ancestor lyric stacks um yeah so I get to fill up my my sad playlist on YouTube oh yes absolutely because that was also like one way that I got people to like cut like circle around me as like ancestor headquarters was just like hey, let me put some sad lyrics on this ancestor art. There you go. It's the perf. It's a masterpiece. (laughs) Um, I, but also I was talking to one of my mods, uh, Leo Pie Shark on Twitter, and we're jokingly, but also not jokingly talking about actually making um, a mini zine for the psionic because his name fits so well into the word zine if you just replace the z with his name um but it sounds stupid if i say it out loud if i can't just say scene because that what does that mean anyway um <laughs> or sign but we wanted to make like a it has to be 22 pages he, he said it has to be 22 pages but like just of either really good or really shitty <laughs> art for the psionic because you know what this is what he deserves this is what he would have wanted so that might be a future project if i can get oh god enough artists that are all legitimately still in the homestuck fandom and actually like the psionic surprisingly a lot of people do a lot of people actually like the psionic probably because everybody has a little bit of captor fever Everybody has a little bit of captor fever. Yeah, you can't escape it. Like he's, he's like the one. Va- like the captors are like the one valid boy. Yeah, in Homestuck, surprisingly, even though they do so much dumb shit, they they <laughs> remain at the end valid because they don't want to be involved in Homestuck at all. And we're all no, like, oh just, god, relatable. Someone just let them leave and give them a burger. Yeah. <laughs> Disciple was asking for the cheeseburger because she wanted to give it to Sai. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that might be a future project. I don't think I'm gonna like I I don't think this will be the last of me. This is not the last you'll ever see of me. I'll definitely I want to make more homestuck projects. 
because I think why not you know Mm -hmm. while I'm still in the fandom while I'm still entertained while people still find me somewhat interesting and find Homestuck (laughs) somewhat interesting sure let's let's milk that um yeah it's it's a really really great resource yeah this really feels like a revival year for for Homestuck absolutely yeah maybe we won't hit like 2014 level highs but like you know it's still big like we got all this new canon ish content uh from the source content i'll say since yes canon is weird. yes <laughs> uh and i mean there are so many zines popping up and so many different projects going on we had our uh a convention which i mean i have oh three God. episodes about i don't need to talk about it too much more um but uh, but yeah this is a, a great year to get into and make your own homestuck projects and because there's so many different people are so talented i'm so proud of this fandom oh me too i think okay i think i came back with a vengeance a little bit like again getting into homestuck in 2018 and being like hey where's the homestuck content and <laughs> yeah. just kind of being like well i guess i gotta do it myself but like i guess oh god i don't want to be making so many analogies but like just kind of taking uh, inspiration from the sideless and being like, hey, let's let's group together. Let's make something good out of this fandom. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know what? This is how I come out and saying that I am the signless. And that's why the <laughs> psionic is my favorite character, because I, as the signless, love him so much. Anyway. <laughs> yes. Uh, you are the human troll Jesus. Yes, I am. Mm-hmm. You, <laughs> I, t- you know what i died at the at the uh podium whatever the hell that was whatever the heck that that l-shaped thing the flogging jet that's what it was anyway yeah. absolutely i i walked i walked so uh all other ancestor stands could run <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're that um a fucking picture of the soldier protecting all the other ancestors yeah. by providing the content <laughs> except instead of like the knives coming down you're like throwing it at them oh yeah <laughs> because yeah. loving the ancestors hurts yeah absolutely there's nothing soft in kind about loving the ancestors because you know that they all have to technically die or be doomed in order for earth sea to exist and it's so funny i, I talking to people about um characters and stuff and like I always whenever I create a character I I create their like okay their life and then I always make sure that they die like I need to know how they die and I remember some people that I was talking to were like no like why do you want to kill your character so badly and it's like as an as a psionic stan I need my characters to die like (laughs) they need rest yeah I can't have them live on forever so your your thing is I have to show characters dying or else they live forever suffering for eternity. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's like, I, I think, you know, as a, as um, other like Homestuck fans, like if you like, I don't know, any of the, any of the kids. Oh, it, like, you know what? This is what happened in the epilogues. I think people were finally getting a taste of their own medicine when they understood finally, oh, my favorite can't die. Oh, they're like god tier now. They live yeah. forever. My favorite it's like, died. Oh yeah, your favorite. Died. <laughs> Give it up for Mike <laughs> pulling out for my boy Dirk. <laughs> Damn, but I mean, he also got to become uh, Super Saiyan, so I he guess did. that's like, <laughs> and as a heart, and also like as a, as a heart player, I appreciated it. I appreciated that one moment of like, haha, the heart players finally get the limelight rather than dying when they turn 13. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Heart players are powerful. They are. We, we flock. <laughs> <laughs> we're all so, we're all very self-centered, but somehow we flock together. Because we have to have someone else to talk to about ourselves. Oh, yeah. We have to validate each other. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We have to stroke our own egos in order Absolutely. to survive. Yes. And that's uh, why I'm here on this uh, podcast, to stroke my own ego about the ancestors. That's why I have a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
but yeah, so uh, that's, that's very exciting. So you said October 18th? Hopefully, yes. October 18th. Okay. Uh, well, links to everything will be in the description. If you have a, do you have a, a, a coffee or a Patreon or anything? Oh, um, yes, I do have a coffee. It's under Glass Goblin. Typically, if you want to find me, just search Glass Goblin on Twitter because that's the shortest handle that I have. And I, people typically get lost when I tell them it's Gutter Water Goblin. So, yes, Glass Goblin. Okay, um, cool. And the zine, the zine, I should be promoting the zine, gosh darn yeah. it. Um, it's called, uh, you can find it at Distant Past Zine on both Twitter and Tumblr. Um, you'll see some really dope art that I drew of the signless dying because, you know, we live like that. Yeah. Um, and you'll be able to see some really cool previews of the zine. And check it out, please. It's again, it's gonna be free. It's gonna be for digital download. Why wouldn't you check it out? Come on, yeah, you have free no content. Not to check it out. <laughs> you have no excuse. There's gonna be like I, oh my god, all of the artists are gorgeous. All the writers are gorgeous. The musician is gorgeous. I like wouldn't. Where would I be without these people? I I just have to really promote them. Like also, whenever I like release a scene, like please check out all of the artists, writers, uh, musician, all involved in the zine, like, because they deserve credit and uh, acknowledgement. Absolutely. And uh, yeah, so there'll be a link to that below. And whenever uh, the release date comes, whether that's October 18th or some other time, I'll be retweeting it on my Twitter and blogging it on Tumblr, if I remember to use Tumblr. <laughs> Woo! It's fine. I forget too. I forget all the time. Yeah, yeah, I'm good for personal posts, but I'm like, oh wait, I have a an account on here for my podcast too. Okay. Oops. It's <laughs> yeah. whatever. Yeah. So uh thank you so much for, for coming on and talking more about the ancestors. You guys will make an ancestor stand out of me yet. <laughs> thank you so much for having <laughs> me. And it will it it might happen. It's only yeah. a matter of time. It really isn't hard. Yeah, I just to... need to read some more good fix, maybe <laughs> to... not smut. To quote, um, what was it? That paper's everywhere. Run to you. It's only a matter of time, baby. <laughs> yeah. Um, and since I forgot at the beginning, even though I have a document in front of me, thank you to Dami for my intro and outro. Thank you to Abby for the episode artwork. And thank you to Kansas Just Got Gayer and uh, Jacob King for being my patrons. And I will see you guys this Saturday with Esther Quest, which Woo! is good. This podcast's theme is Dirty Dirt Kenny and was created by Domi, who can be found on SoundCloud as Domino Thief. The art for the podcast was done by Abby, who you can find on Twitter at Space Arby's. Unless it wasn't. Shout out to my patrons, Kansas Just Got Gayer and Jacob King. To become a patron and get episodes up to five days early, along with other benefits, go to patreon.com slash sociallyanxiousdragon and sign up for as little as $1 a month. You can find links to that and more in the episode's description, on the podcast's Twitter, JaxDoesHS, or on JaxDoesHomestuck.com. Please remember to rate this podcast on iTunes and share with your friends. Thanks for listening, and don't forget to be a little selfish.